Hello fiber friends and welcome to today's video. Today our project is going to be card weaving with hand spun yarn. If you've been following my channel and you saw all of the Vlogmas videos that we did with the spinning advent calendar throughout December, I put a blessing in each day of that advent calendar and those blessings were on these little cards that were uh, just little cards like this, right? And it has the blessing that number 25 said, may your creativity spin and flourish this year and always. But if you look at the back of those blessings, uh, they have this A, B, C, and D, and there's a hole by each one because these blessing cards become tablet weaving cards. And so I have had this project planned for quite a while. Um, this is my deck of Vlogmas cards to do the tablet weaving or card weaving with. If you are following along and you don't have these particular cards, that's okay. I have you covered because you can also get pre-made. I have some here from Shocked. You can get uh, other pre-made tablet weaving cards. And if you're into DIY, you can make your own tablet weaving cards. All you need is a hole puncher and a deck of playing cards. You can pick those up at the dollar store. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a huge complicated thing and it will <laughs> work very easily for DIY. But I will put some links for all of those resources, of course, in the description below. You can check that out. Now, the whole thing here is that we are going to do this tablet weaving with hand spun yarn. So the pull worth that I started with was undyed and I took the whole thing and I split it up into one ounce portions and then I dyed each of those a different color. That was so much fun. And I actually do think that I like tablet weaving with hand spun better and we know that I love to spin yarn. <laughs> I'm a little bit uh, biased towards hand spun yarn here but when we weave it's really important to have the right characteristics in the yarn that we're using. A lot of the yarn that's available for purchase commercially is intended to be used for knitting, crochet, those types of prog projects. But if you use that yarn in a weaving project, sometimes it can come out too fluffy, um, especially for tablet weaving, which or card weaving, which is um, those terms are used interchangeably, by the way. Uh, so you might hear me say one or the other. But uh, those tablet weaves, when they're very fluffy as a warp faced weave, it can kind of obscure the pattern a little bit. So having a yarn that's a little bit more uh, higher twist, more densely spun, more tightly spun, that's going to give us a better effect, a better surface area and a better kind of uh, view of the pattern of it in a warp faced weave. So I have been busy spinning up some yarn. I really enjoy using Polworth and it's a little more of a long stapled long wool and it has a good length to spin for weaving, especially for warp. It has that strength that I want it to have. Um, it does have a little bit of elasticity to it, but not so much that I would call it bouncy in the way that I was able to spin it. And I uh, gave it a little bit more of a, of a higher degree of twist. That adds to the durability. And so that's gonna make it a lot easier to take the abrasion that happens with warp.
here is the pattern <laughs> that I have picked out and I realized I'm gonna have to turn this around for you. <laughs> so this is what the uh, design is going to look like as it is woven. And over here we have the direction of turning the cards forward or backwards. And I liked this pattern because I'm using an inkle loom to weave this pattern. And because every time you turn those cards, it builds up some twist. This is called a twist neutral pattern. Um, it, it will add some twist, but then the cards reverse to take away that twist. There are different ways that you can manage how your twist is building up or um, to remove it in different ways. But for me, I just wanted a simple twist neutral pattern and that's what this is. Um, but the other thing I was looking at here was how this pattern comes out. I have these different colors of yarn that I want to use to weave this pattern. We want to make sure that these colors are going to stand out in the woven fabric. And so I thought because this, this blue here really, really pops against all of these, wouldn't it be fun, <laughs> because I have to change it up somehow, wouldn't it be fun to do a different color in these sections that um, have these sort of diamond shapes around them and then use this blue instead of having a white and a gray I would use this blue for the white but then I would replace these three here with a different color for each one and then I would use this gray for um, the borders and for these little half design things going on here, um, as well as the lines within the pattern overall. I think that could look really lovely and really pretty. So the next thing that I am going to do is follow this pattern and thread each of my cards. On the bottom of the pattern here, uh, it shows a stack of four squares. Those four squares each represent one weaving card. And so my uh, first bunch are gonna go into slot A and then slot B, C, D um, for each stack of little squares. And so the first one, it says, uh, it says four of the white squares and I can see on the picture here, that's my edge. I'm going to use the color that will be for the edge. And then I will proceed to the next card, which has four of the darker color here. And because I've chosen uh, to use this darker gray for um, this edging and all of the kind of lines of this sort of latticework pattern in there, um, whenever I see that, I'm going to put that in based on the square it lines up with. Um, so this sounds really confusing. It's not as confusing once you do it, once you see it all laid out and once you put it together. Um, so <laughs> I guess the only other thing to note is that some of these are going to go into the card. It, it's kind of like S and Z twist. Uh, it's an S and Z direction for whether it's going into the card, if the card is lined up, whether it's coming in this way or coming in all oh, the other way. So I'm going to put the camera down on what I'm doing and I think it will make a little bit more sense as you can see what I'm up to. I love these little balls of different colors. Um, and now I kind of want to make like a whole wall of little tiny balls of yarn with different colors. They're adorable. Um, but I did want to show you uh, just what the yarn looks like from a spinning perspective. If you like what I'm doing and you want to duplicate that on your own, or if you don't like what I'm doing and you want to make sure you don't duplicate that, uh, let me grab a spinning control card. So I tried to keep all my yarn uh, the same as I was spinning, but I think the green came out just a smidge thicker, but it's not a whole lot. Most of these are falling right at about 30 wraps per inch, and the green is maybe closer to 25 wraps per inch. I was aiming for about 
um, a 30 degree twist angle. So if you take your yarn and hold it straight up and down on a, on a card like this or on a protractor, and then um, look at if you draw a line across how the yarn uh, is plied, then you can get the degree of twist. And so most of these are right, right at the 30, maybe a smidge less um, moving towards the 20. But I think a 30 is a pretty, uh, fairly high twist yarn, and it should be nice and durable and uh, work well for its intended purpose. So I have my my darker blue color, and that is going to be three of the threads on the next card. So I'm going to wrap this around three times. I've already done one, and now I'm going to do two more. When I come back to the peg, I will cut this in the end, but um, I find it faster not to. I just give it three extra turns around the peg to give me enough room that um, at the end I can tie it off. So you'll see what that looks like in just a moment. I'm using my orifice hook for my spinning wheel and I'm just going to pull them through each, um, each hole in the order that they are um, wrapped on the loom. And I can see the order uh, based on how they go over the pegs. So then we have C is also a darker blue. And D is a light blue. And because this is Z, I'm pulling them through this direction. If it was S, I would be plucking them through from the other direction. And then that card is going to go with its friends and hang out. And I had the other end of this just wrapped around um, this bottom peg just to kind of keep it from slipping and falling off all over the place. But now, now we are ready to tie it off. And I'm doing a surgeon's knot, so I go instead of around it once like I do when I tie my shoes, I go around it twice. And then... Um, just kind of tighten it up and then finish that off, pulling the rest through. There we go.
for a couple of days now and I'm ready to tell you some of the interesting things that I have been learning from this project. So let's talk about a few things. The first thing I want to mention, if you're doing any weaving of any type, passing a shuttle back and forth, don't put your coffee next to your weaving. Always on the other side of the table for safety. The first thing I want to say is that wool is sticky. That is why it's so much easier if you've never tablet woven before to do your first project with a crochet cotton or flax like a linen thread or yarn if you can get a hold of that. It's a lot easier because the threads slip past each other as you're turning the cards. The wool it it just wants to hold on to its friends and it's like <laughs> Every time you're trying to turn the cards, it feels sticky. Now I did intentionally spin this yarn wor uh, worsted, so it, I did it very smooth, everything kind of going the same direction, and I gave it a lot of twist so that that twist would hold those threads together. Um, it's, it's not like a lofty woolen type of spin that I did with this. and. It is still sticky. So there are ways to get around that with sizing and, and other different methods, but there are a couple things I'm doing to help with the abrasion factor. I'll show you what those look like. The first thing is when I turn the cards, I don't turn it just up to the point they need to turn. I give them just a little turn past and then back and that helps to break loose any threads that are holding on to each other within the shed where I need to pass my shuttle. The next thing that I do is put my finger through the shed, the opening where the shuttle is going to go, to make sure that nobody is stuck holding on to a friend because that could mean that I end up with a color showing on the pattern that I don't want because it gets lifted up or I'm missing a color because it's held back uh, with the threads ending up on the lower or the back side for that turn of the cards. I don't slide the cards back and forth. I use my fingers to reach in and um, specifically pull apart any threads that are stuck. If I'm sliding my cards back and forth, that's all that abrasion going through every single punched hole on every single card, on every single thread, and all that does is just cause it to fuzz up and any of that halo is gonna make it more sticky. Uh, so those are a couple of things to keep in mind. Another thing that helps keep everybody separated when they need to be is to have good tension on the loom. Although I did make a mistake. When I started this, I think I had my peg in the center and I should have really put it, if not all the way to the back, practically all the way to the back. Um, because now I'm coming in on the last half of the weaving and I don't have a lot of room for tension adjustment. So that might cause a problem. I might squeak by, we will see. But definitely make sure that you <laughs> thread your uh, loom up, warp your loom up with your peg in the right place. A couple of other things that I have noticed that are really helpful, um, and these might seem obvious, but I think once you kind of mentally get into the thick of the weaving, they just don't always occur. So I wanted to mention these because I find them to be helpful. One thing is to look at, especially for this pattern, because this is more of a beginner-friendly pattern, all the cards are moving the same way at the same time. But if you have you know, some cards moving different ways at different times. Find the place in the pattern where you can sort of create a landmark for yourself. Like if I'm at the beginning of the orange diamonds, is starting the orange diamond pattern, I know that the A is going to be in the top right corner of the cards and I will turn them towards me four times. When I am at the beginning of the blue diamond, um, I know that the A is going to be in the top left corner and I'm going to turn the cards away from me four turns. 
Now that's really helpful for two reasons. One, I don't have to keep the pattern next to me. I will know where I'm at and I just find it more convenient not to have to constantly refer back to a pattern. But the other reason that's really useful to know is that if I make a mistake, if I turn it five times instead of four, <laughs> um, I am able to back it up and know which part of the pattern should be created at which point the cards are you know turned or facing which direction and so that's helped me um unpick a couple times when i you know didn't start turning the cards in the other direction i kept going and my pattern started to look funny and i knew exactly how to back that up to get to where it needed to be so i think those are a couple of tips that hopefully should be really helpful to you i am loving loving this whole process I love doing things with my hand spun yarn and I love incorporating these historical kinds of textiles that are not so common um, in our kind of day-to-day -day. you know you couldn't go to some big box store and uh, get a textile like this or if it looked like this it's it's not actually <laughs> the same thing right <laughs> I think you know what I'm trying to say. Um, but I love incorporating these historical kinds of textiles into my life, into um, useful things around me uh, to just be surrounded by that art. It's really inspiring and I love it. So in the comments, I would love to find out and hear about what do you do with your historic kinds of things? Um, if you are creating those or even if you're just hand spinning your own yarn, what do you do with it to make it relevant for your daily life and not just relegated to a costume that comes out for a special occasion? Are you? Have you thought about uh, incorporating these things into your daily life? Maybe, maybe it's, you know, hats and gloves. Those are useful too and we definitely need those in the day to day, especially right now. It's January and uh, there's been a cold snap and lots of snow that's why I feel like springtime flowers today. I needed to bring out a little bit of flowers. Although this is such a tangent, but I will say I have a begonia. I love begonias. They're my favorite flowers. I have a begonia that has kept its flowers. This is January right now, and it bloomed, I think, last August, and it's had its flowers all winter long. It's, it's kind of incredible. I have no idea what I did to deserve those flowers. Thank you, Begonia. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get back to the weaving and I will show you the finished band. Um, you know, the magic of editing. You'll get to see it in just one second. 